Dude, dude. I almost, I don't know, like, this. we're in between now, and I kind of want you to tell us the Pokemon story so that I can use it as a bonus or a, 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 an after show clip, but it's up to you. Which Pokemon story? The thing you told me about how you used to get your Pokemon games when you were so, oh, fa so oh, far okay. not nerd, so far not Neil, nerd. Neil, I don't even know if I told you. I don't you. think Neil knows this. I don't think anybody no. but me knows this. So, so that was another closet nerd thing. I, I was always into like, I thought Pokemon was cool. And I was actually like, mm -hmm. I was really good. What was that? fucking game i was like ranked, Show, uh, showdown uh showdown yeah. have you, do you know what pokemon showdown is neil pokemon showdown. It, it's like uh it's like uh all over the world um you could go and and, and battle you know like okay. six on six okay. i was i was ranked like uh top 100 in the world i had oh, broke shit. yeah i broke into a top 100 in the world but but yeah but but i was younger you know i'd want like say uh I don't, I don't remember which game like pokemon sapphire was coming out or whatever mm -hmm. and i i'd want it so like i would make i had a buddy named dan and he oh, had a no. he you're had, about he had, to tell me what i think you're about <laughs> to tell me. let him he tell the story a, let him tell the had, story he had a little brother named travis <laughs> well and travis as we got older ends up becoming our friend but like when we were little, I would make Travis because he was like three years younger come to the store with me and shit. And or uh, or if he wouldn't come, you know, I'd go buy the game and and I'd like pretend to be on the phone like, yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, mom, which one is it that he wants? Oh While I'm God. standing by the case, you know, with the guy at Walmart or whatever, and I'd be like, he wants wh which 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 games this little nerd want, you know, and I'd. There's no one on the phone. And I'd be like, oh fine, uh, fine, I'll get sapphire, emerald, whatever for him. You know, I'm like, hey man, do you hear? My, my mom said my little brother wants this. And, 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 yeah, there was no one on the phone. I was buying the game for me, oh but I was God. like too fucking embarrassed to admit that I was, you know, I, I mean, I was probably what like 15, 16 at the time. I would, I would love. I would love to be there and like have him doing that to the guy and be like, yeah, did you hear that? Like Pokemon, Sapphire, Emerald or Sapphire. And the guy's like, yeah, I think I got an Emerald back here. No, I want Sapphire. Get the Sapphire. I mean, I mean my brother. I mean my brother. Yeah, my, my, my brother's a little brat. Like, oh my God. Don't it's, get it wrong. It's like, it's I'd like, be like my stupid mom just keeps sending me out for errands. She's always working. <laughs> <laughs> go get food go get milk go buy your brother a pokemon game it's like it's like the opposite of getting somebody to buy you beer <laughs> I, dude i would be brutal on the phone to my fake fake parent because i'd be like what are you gonna tell him to grow up <laughs> He's like extra mean to him. I'm sure the guy behind the counter could give literally zero. No, he he does not care. He does not care at all. He does not no, care at all. Oh my god. He just, because he's an adult, he's not an idiot like me. Everyone cared. He's probably like, yeah, I just bought sapphire for myself the day it came out. I got sapphire and emerald at home, man. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm 34 and work at Walmart in the game department. Of course I'm a nerd. Like, what? Time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Horrible Gaming Podcast. Hello, my name is Zach Ryan with Old Man Gaming. You, dear listener, have chosen for whatever reason to tune into another Horrible Gaming Podcast. I am not alone. Mostly I am never alone. With me is my co-host... Neil, a.k.a. Tiny Wizard... 
But we are not alone. We are not alone. We are, we are joined by a special guest, and you are seeing his face for the first time on a podcast. Uh, the Buildmaster General. Yo, what's up, old man? Ben Philbilly 330 here. It's been a while. It's been a while, and yes, you are blessed or cursed to see this uh, <laughs> mug. We, uh, congratulations on your uh, two times dad. Two time dad. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. How's everybody doing, by the way? Uh, they, they are doing great. And less good. sleep than, than um, I was grown accustomed to. <laughs> Phil's going to be looking over his shoulder for baby cries <laughs> all, all night, all night. Uh, she's got me tonight. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, before we get into our show, I, I think you guys all know what we're going to be talking about today just because we're finally joined by the Buildmaster. Uh, but before we get into that, we got to do the credits, and that is number one, behind our ugly mug, although very skewed because I had to fit three faces in, is uh, a custom picture designed by Mr. Mark Bell. We thank him for that. And then, of course, the writer and singer and performer of the theme song for this show. And all of the shows here at Old Man Gaming is my brother, the man who makes the music, Nick Van Sliders. We thank him for that. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so that brings us to our first segment, our most important segment, and that is fan interaction. That's where we, the co-hosts, talk to you guys, the fans, and all the places that you post the things, uh, at least if we remember to see them and read them. Uh, so we only got two comments this week. Uh, first, we got Asylum66. He says, I hate MMO, live service, Diablo slash Borderlands, current idea of an endgame. Number one, dungeon. I'm sorry, one dungeon slash level you replay over and over to get gear to shave off a couple of seconds to replay that level slash dungeon for loot to further shave off time uh, to play that same damn level slash dungeon over and over and over. I mean, I like live service and MMOs, but I do agree when it gets down to that point, it's very frustrating. I... I, the the grind is a killer, and I think that uh, Borderlands is definitely suffering from that grind, which we're definitely going to talk about today. I'm sure we're going to talk about today, but I think I think there are lives live service and MMOs that can do stuff better uh, and provide stuff better, but I think uh, many times they fall in that trap of uh, grinding equals content, you know, and that is. Uh, that's that's not true. It's just not true. We've talked about that before on the channel. You guys want to weigh in on this? Yeah. I mean, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I, I should have pointed to one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have I, seen it if you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's true. But it's true. I I think I get where Asylum's coming from. At least the way I read that comment. Like I don't think he's saying he hates right those types of games. I think, but I think he's right. I think the way. I've played so many of those types of games lately and they all kind of do the same thing. Like even, even new world. Mm -hmm. Once you got to that end game loop, it, it was a lot of that. Like, you know, you beat the story. So you're literally going into these dungeons to get better gear, to improve your build, to beat the dungeon a little faster that you just beat to get better gear, to go back in to beat the dungeon just a little faster, to improve the build that doesn't fucking need improving, obviously, mm -hmm. because you just beat the dungeon with it, but you're trying to shave this quarter second of time off, and it just becomes this loop that, man, I, I mean, I know there's got to be a gameplay loop, but... Uh, it seems like all these games I'm playing with that type of loop at the end, and, and I and, and I've played a couple MMOs lately, and then and then Borderlands, and I, I think I get where he's coming from with this. Uh, I get where he's coming from too, and I I think I think that there's better ways of doing it, but I know Neil I wanted to too. say something. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much like the biggest issue that I have with those sorts of games is there does get to be that point where it's the same thing over and over and over again. 
to where like why exactly are you doing it sure to get ahead for maybe the next event that rolls around that you need like a higher power level or something like that for but like i I don't know it's that if you're gonna keep going over and doing the same thing over and over and over again it needs to be something either very interesting or have some sort of like random procedural generation thrown into it even like changing up like waves of enemies, something, well, anything. And you need more than just procedural generation on like a couple of things. Like there's one end game that I really liked back in the day. It was a uh, torchlight, the first torchlight. It was a Diablo dungeon crawler sort of game. I, I beat it all the way through. I really liked it. But once you beat the main game all the way through, they create this other dungeon that literally procedurally, procedurally generates the dungeon down to the wire. So like not just not just enemies, not just the map, but the map itself would change. Sometimes you're in the lava, sometimes you're in the snow. Like So it, it constantly felt like you were going to a new undiscovered area. And while even that seems a little bit small, I think people need to focus on, like, with Endgame, I think these developers need to switch focus from the grind of getting better loot to getting new content or some way of, like, switching up the content. I think... I think it would be much more fun in a game like Borderlands or Diablo if once you had that build, and and we're going to talk about this in Borderlands, I'm sure, but once you had that build, put us, like, allow us to take it into different situations, situations that haven't been charted yet, instead of that same situation over and over again, to somehow make the build. Like, instead, like, once we have the build, stop making us focus on the build. Just let us play with the build, and that's the problem. Like the whole game is about the build uh, to do what with, you know. But what? But we'll, we'll get in. We'll get into it. Yeah, we will mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I we're already touching on what we're going to talk about today, <laughs> but we gotta we gotta get into uh, we gotta get into William Hoolan's comment because I need that high exclamation point. Ah, it's like drugs for me, dude. <laughs> Dude, my wife and I bought a house four years ago, and while I do like living in my own place and all, once you have a house, everyone wants your money. We have weekly visits from people that wants to sell us stuff. When it's not to have a greener weather, when it's not to have greener grass, it's to have better looking driveway. Ugh, such a pain. Sorry for the rant. Uh, before we continue. Don't be sorry, Will. I I experience this on a regular basis. I totally feel your pain. Uh, it's it, yeah. solicitors suck. Um, on the wrestling thing, we should hang out. That would be great. I will hang out with you, Will, and I will make you a wrestling fan. I will make you a wrestling fan. Trust me. Uh, he then continues. Thanks for your input on Tiny Tina's. You're about to get hold of. It. Yeah, it did. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Right. Thanks for your input on Tiny Tina's. It did help me understanding why it didn't click with me. Starfield is delayed. What? Oh my god. Well, on the bright side, it's going to give them more time to think of more pre order bonuses to sell us. <laughs> uh, recycling the same old stuff is unfortunately plaguing the movie industry, too. How many Fast and the Furious are we up to? Nine? Ten? Saw Series 2? I think there's nine now. Ideas are becoming a rare thing nowadays. Thanks for the show. Cheers. I do want to say something before I turn it over to you guys, because I know you guys have plenty of things to say about this comment. Uh, I don't think ideas are a rare, uh, a rare no. thing. I think, I think the problem is, is that they get pushed away because... People just want to make money on the quick butt. They just like that's not going to make money because it's a new idea. So like, why are we going to? Chicken shit. Yeah, they're chicken shit. They don't want to. They don't want to try these new ideas. I don't. I think the world has tons of new ideas, and I think if you look at gaming in the independent scene, there is just new ideas coming out of the wazoo. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the wazoo. They're new ideas that don't have the money behind them to to. Right. Uh, to really compete or get there. How many games have all three of us played from an indie where we're like, this game is great, and if they had $2.5 million to make it, this game would be the best game. 
this game would be game of the year without a doubt, but it's not because they don't have $2.5 to make it because somebody wants to make Halo 37. Like, it's just so frustrating. I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with the lack of great ideas. I think it has a, a serious lack of people being willing to bet money on the great ideas, but I think it's going to bite them. People get fatigued with shit. I don't watch Marvel movies anymore. I can't, I can't do it. I can't watch. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Either. Like every one of those movies has forty-seven other characters in it. From like, I can't. I I I can't keep up with that shit anymore. I'm, I'm not even caught up. Like, mm -mm. and I don't have the the drive to do it. And I think movies are the same way, though. Like, I I don't think. Yeah. That, I think there's people out there with the ideas for yeah. really cool films, but what keeps getting pushed through Hollywood is this what they think is a sure thing, you know, right. and, mm -hmm. and they're not willing to take that risk because there's just so much money, um, involved. And obviously there's a lot more issues in Hollywood right now, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of issues everywhere. I, I think one of the big issues is stifling creativity and I think movies are the same way. I think how many independent films have I watched in the last year that I've thought if that fucking had money, that would have been the best movie I've ever seen. And they did great with what it was, but just think if they had a billion dollars to make that, you know? So I think it's the same thing. I don't think there's a lack of great ideas. I think there's, I think it's the same thing with everything else. There's a bunch of people at the top who keep everybody else down. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the way it is. Uh, yeah. Do you guys want to weigh in on anything? I was just going to say, like, it's not just that, too. It's like you guys kind of touched on, too. The second something does take off, then, oh, hot shit, let's make eight more yeah. of these things like yeah. the one Eat thing that yeah i I'd even like the, the one thing that i had kind of said too uh like with horizon i love the first horizon mm -hmm. i was excited for the second horizon but the one thing that i had said was i really hope after the second horizon they kind of dial yeah. it back a little bit maybe step away from that idea just for a minute to do something out. No, they got a VR game coming out. Mm -hmm. They've already said we, that they're, they've sown the seeds for the third game and fourth game. We definitely game. talked about this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, that's the thing is something does take off and great. It's a new idea, but at the same time, the second that gets cemented, they don't want to change the formula up or anything like that. Cause as much as I like, uh, forbidden West, it is literally horizon, but more of it. Right. There is not like, all but one thing basically new in that game. Well, it is a straight up and down continuation and, in and that, all facets. That is a really good point too. I, I, I do feel like it's like the minute something takes off or the minute something's good, it's not even just like, like you remember back in the day, it was like when you heard you were getting a sequel of a movie you really liked, you got excited, like, wow, they're making a second one of that. Now it's like the minute a movie is good and you saw it, you're, you're like, I better get a second one of that. Like, it's almost yeah. like, it's almost like a contractual obligation that we're going to get a franchise out of it if it does good. Sometimes I almost hope these mov movies or games don't do good, so we don't get a second one. We get just a one and done and can can enjoy it for what it is. Or they already yeah. set they they set everything up like for a sequel no matter what. Yeah. Movies, games, stuff like that. Ever since like the Marvel movies started doing it, 90% mm -hmm. of the time when somebody goes to see a movie, unless you know straight up and down that it is going to be a one-off thing, which is very rare, more often than not, people will get on Google when the credits start rolling to see, like, Google whatever movie's name it is, post credit scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's rare anymore that that movie even has to do well to be guaranteed that. So, like, yeah. the, the last one I can remember that I was truly excited to see that the movie did well was uh, I had went and seen Dune, you know, the, mm. uh, how they redid Dune. Well, mm. They obviously that movie is set up to have a sequel, but there wasn't a guarantee that it would like that movie had to perform. And I, it was like the last time I can remember being excited that something I was interested in did perform well right. enough to for them to be like, hey, guys, you did it. You're approved for the second, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Especially on the other side, when we're supposed to get another Harry Potter movie, even though it underperformed, they're like, yeah. we're still going to give you an like, why, dude? Like, there's been like six of these fucking things. Let it lie for a little bit. And on top of that, even like because you just mentioned it, the Harry Potter stuff, 
Like mm-hmm. the Fantastic Beasts, we saw the most recent one. It was not good. That's what I heard. <laughs> at all. And, and to the, be fair, none of those Fantastic Beasts movies have been like amazing. Right. They, none of them have done nearly as good as like the core, you know. The, yeah. The yeah. And that's the thing is they've already said, like Warner Brothers already came out and said, oh, well, you know, we want to keep within the the universe of the Harry Potter movie, so we may be done with Fantastic Beasts, but we're gonna find something else. Yeah, I mean, we're that gonna goes melt back. That out. Exactly, and that's the thing. It's like it's the same with games. It's <laughs> yeah. the same with games. Sometimes old Bessie needs to be taken out to pasture. Oh, and, and put, <laughs> yeah, grind her down and make some sliders. Well, this got weird. This <laughs> this got real weird. This went from like talking about movies to dead animals. That was a All real right, hard right there, real fast. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean... <laughs> took us, took us there. Uh, and and thanks, uh, thanks to you, Will, for commenting. I always appreciate it, buddy. Um, but that is that's it for our fan oh, traction, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I want to throw one in because I didn't type it because I found out that I had to be on the show. <laughs> but this is kind of uh, to Will and and just the fact that you guys had uh, mentioned how Zach being the Hyde Piper of, of nerds and, and Will be careful uh, what you wish for because it, it is somewhat factual. Like I, mean, I thought you were going to counter it. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a a, a secret like Zach's my brother-in-law, but mm-hmm. um, when when I met Zach, was I still in high school? I, yeah, I think, I think I so. In high school, I think so. And so in high school, guys, I I wouldn't call myself like a jock or anything, but I was not. I was an athlete and stuff. I, I didn't, I, I had a little bit of a closet nerd tendencies. Like I think me and Zach actually connected because I was a closet, like comic book nerd. Uh-huh. So I had, I had comic books and stuff, but n- my buddies didn't know. Hell, my girlfriend didn't know. I was like <laughs> deep into it. And my girlfriend for most of the time I knew Zach was my wife. Um, so yeah, she didn't even know, and then and then me and Zach would talk at you know family gatherings about that shit. Next thing I know, I'm rolling dice on a table, <laughs> playing fucking <laughs> games that I would have like called people the D and D nerds about. Oh, you know? and, and no, no, I'm that that nerd. And and as you get older, obviously you don't give a shit. I, you do what you like to do, and <laughs> forget what everyone else says if no one really has a problem with it once you're out of that high school phase anyways obviously but yeah yeah you realize once you're older that nobody fucking cares you know what yeah, i mean like it's yeah, everything in high school is their own thing yeah but, everybody's um, in high school is just so much more worried about everything than when yeah, you become an stupid. adult yeah. <laughs> but, and, uh, all, everybody does it yeah everybody's been there but, most of our viewers are adults now anyways but yeah he is a he is a pied piper of of nerds like i i used to watch like pro wrestling when i'm talking when i was like six like you know like the the attitude era yeah everyone watched pro wrestling yep next thing i know i'm talking to zach and i know everything about wwe (laughs) and and i'm coming i'll come for you will i'll come for you will i'll get you will i'll get you so be careful. He is. He, I'm, I'm sure there's weirder and worse things to be converted to. <laughs> he, it's true. He does do that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I definitely bring people into nerddoms. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, all right. Well, thank you for that in-person comment, <laughs> Phil, and for backing. I was. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if you're going to back it up or not. Um, but. We're going to wrap up Fan Traction. We're going to start talking about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. We'll be right back. Uh, yeah. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so that brings us to our talking point today. And we're probably a little bit behind on this, uh, but we promised it. We're going to do it. And, you know, being behind has only given us all a chance to experience the game and really come to terms with it. Uh, so we are talking... Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I mean, what else would we be talking with the Bill Master here? Uh, unless, you know, he's just here. Uh, 
in any case, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, it came out. We've had a lot of time with it. Its second DLC has just released. Yeah, it just dropped. I, <laughs> I have some negative feelings about this. You guys have made, been made note by those negative feelings. I think me and Neil have talked about this kind of extensively a little bit because of the fan traction. So I'm actually going to give yeah. Phil the, the chance to open this one up and talk about... What, how he's felt about Wonderlands, and then we can go into it because you and I, Neil, have shared our thoughts on it many times. Yeah. Slightly, we're gonna get deeper into it. But why don't you start us off, Phil? What do you think about the game? Well, I'll start from the beginning. So when Wonderlands launched, I honestly think it was quite possibly one of the most successful launches that any of the Borderlands games in the franchise had. Like, I'm being honest, I, I do. Um, th as far as at launch, I think it had the best end game. I truly think that. Um, and I thought, you know, I played through the whole story um, with uh, Filthy Phil, who I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know if you've uh, checked out the channel. He's in a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, we played through that whole game. We like 100% of that whole game, which it, up until um, the DLCs, you know, um, which is something that, shit, I, I don't know that we have ever done with the Borderlands game. There's a lot of shit, um, you know, packed into those. But, you know, we had a good time. The story was pretty good. I'm not saying it was like the greatest story. It definitely was not the longest, but it was good. It was solid, in my opinion. And um, the end game, so what they did was they had chaos chambers. And the way it worked was it was um, procedural uh, procedurally generated um, dungeons, basically. And you would run through two uh dungeons and then you would fight a mini boss and then you would run through two more dungeons and then the the final dungeon would have you know a big boss which was typically uh a boss from from the main story uh campaign stuck in at the end and that was how you you beat it and then um you would collect uh, crystals and you would go into your final like loot room after you completed the run and you would spend uh, your loot at uh, the barf bunnies, which they're just like statues of, you know, so if you were looking for uh, a sword explosion, which is a AR made by Torg, you could put all your crystals into the assault rifle um barf bunny so you could kind of target farm which was pretty cool like i mean you you couldn't pick that you wanted a torg but you know there's only i don't know let's say 16 or 17 legendary assault rifles so you could actually target farm you went through the loop it felt like you were working towards what you wanted to do to, to accomplish and I thought that was really good um, and then that's also how you raised your chaos level so in the beginning you know you had 1 through 20 20 was the highest once you hit 20 you had like a 1% chance of primordial gear and uh, you had like a 20% chance of chaotic gear not primordial because uh, primordial is the thing they added that kind of sucks yeah it, it's not there was something before Primord. Uh, it, it's it's neither here or there. But so now they have Primordial. But uh, so that was pretty cool. And then what happened? But you know, you got to to Chaos level twenty, and you were I was pretty done running the Chaos Chambers. Like even though they were they were cool, like. Uh, the loop was starting to get a little old. But then, this is where the game, in my opinion, really kind of fell off a cliff. So, of course, they come out with their first patch. They find out what guns people are like, and they nerf them into the ground. And then, like, they nerf them bad. Like, uh, 
the liquid cooling. It, it, was, it went from best gun in the game to complete trash. So then what starts to happen, because they do all these nerfs, um, purples, so your epic guns, actually start to become better than your legendary guns. Which isn't... It's not bad if purples are usable, but it's kind of bad when they're outclassing, you know, your legendary, your legendary gun. Well, then they drop DLC 1. I bought it. Biggest waste of money ever. DLC 1 was literally just another chaos chamber. I beat the DLC in 12 minutes. Uh, they charged $10 for the DLC, which was the same price as... Um, it, it was, it used to be $15 for a full story DLC with like Borderlands 3 and Borderlands 2, but even Headhunter packs that Borderlands 2 had, like, um, there was the, I'm not gonna, yeah, I know what you're talking there about. There was like the, the snowman one, uh huh, and, that and a, the mercenary, was, mercenary day one, yeah, yeah, they were like almost day. seasonal. The, even those Headhunter packs, they would be a good hour of content and they would charge five bucks for them right they're charging ten dollars for i'm not kidding like i was beaten in 12 minutes on the hardest difficulty that's a big slap in the face to the community no one was happy with it like absolutely nobody it's not just me complaining um and then what they do to 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 fake content is Remember, guys, at this point, the game is a month and a half old. Mm -hmm. And they raise the chaos levels from 20 to 30, or 20 to 35. Mm. At chaos level 35, the enemy health scaling goes up to 1,500%. So, literally, they're just making enemies sponges. That's what they used to do with Anthem. Yeah, to give this false false difficulty. It's not... It's such bullshit. And what that does, the minute they did that, it destroyed the meta. So, you may have wondered, like, why I never put out any builds. I had builds... I couldn't make anything unique. Uh, everything to be able to compete at, at Chaos 30, go look online. It was I was doing the same thing everyone else was because there was no open meta. You were running spell shot, um, and you were taking advantage of all the triple dipping and double dipping skills in the um, in the trees. So you could run spell shot with just about anything, like spell shot Greyborn, if you wanted to. Literally, um, what I have. That's literally wanted, what I have. <laughs> if you wanted to sling magic, you were running spell shot Greyborn. If you wanted to debuff and um, and, and use guns, you were using spell shot um, uh, uh, Spore Ward, which is what I was running typically. Um, the Clawbringer was is and to my knowledge will always be useless because it's a very melee focused um class and they're even building like the boss in the dlc that was just released a couple days ago it's anti-melee though you can't melee the boss (laughs) Uh, you can you have to like run to the top of the map jump off and then you can hit it once with your melee weapon on the way down. And then you'd have to run back up and do it again. So they're anti-meleeing these enemies in a game that they touted that melee was going to be this, you know, possible thing to use. And it is in the main game, but it's just, it's unreasonable. And and these these pixies, these fucking pixie builds, it is the most boring thing. I'll go in. On Chaos 35, I can melt everything in seconds, but it's the most mind-numbingly boring shit. I shoot one bullet, I reload. I shoot one bullet, I reload. I shoot one bullet, I reload. And my little fucking guns turn into pixies and they fly around and melt everything on the map. And in the meantime, I shoot my bow 
and I debuff everything around me. And it takes more damage because with the way they scaled the health pools of these enemies, I mean, you kind of have to. You you, you got to cheese it and you got to take advantages of all these uh, skills in the trees that'll double dip with each other. So like, you know, like uh, so spell shot, the reason it's so so popular is because it has some abilities that raise your spell damage and gun damage so then when you get another class like spore warden that has abilities that raise your gun damage it's raising it's it's all math it's raising your gun damage which is then multiplicatively being raised by your spell shots power and since you're starting at a higher gun damage it's going to boost off of that to spell damage and then max match the gun damage with it so you're using spell shot for both spell and and gun builds it's just they they don't know how to i don't think these companies play their games (laughs) i don't think they understand how i i think that there are communities that love their games know a million times more about their own freaking game than they do i i I I truly think that. that I would agree with that. Um, thank you for that very in-depth um, look at it. I appreciate it. Um, the, I, I agree with you. And this is coming from a Clawbringer player. <laughs> so it, it's a real bummer because I really enjoyed that class. And one thing I liked about this game in the beginning when it first showed up is that, and one thing that I've, I've always hated about Borderlands is I fall. there's a point where I fall behind. Where, like, whatever I'm running, like, I'm having fun, but whatever I'm running falls behind and I can't catch up because my build isn't quite there. Because of all those trees and all how complicated it is and stuff. I thought the way they simplified things in this gave you the second tree and allowed you to really play with it. It just kind of opened up the meta to where, like, even though the Clawbringer was still, like, the worst class when this game first launched, in everybody's opinion, I could still do everything. Yeah, I could still make a build. I have a build right now. That is good. I'm very proud of it. Uh, I haven't finished the game. I know when I finish the game, it's going to be useless. And I don't... That's something that always puts me off. It puts me off when I know that, like, oh, I'm going to get to this point where it just doesn't matter anymore. And, like... It, it, it takes me out of it a lot. It, it really does. And I, I, and it, I... It should. Yeah. Yeah. They're so stupid. They'll make comments like, oh, well, you could just play on a lower difficulty. Fuck you guys. Like, yeah. No, no one wants to fucking play in Endgame on anything lower than the than Chaos 35. It doesn't make sense. You put it in the game. So, of course, someone who cares enough to get deep into endgame wants to play at that right i mean at least that's how i think of it well and if somebody doesn't if somebody doesn't that's fine but they should still have the option to play whatever they want at that deep level if they yeah. do want to go that deep there should never be a class where it's like you're never going to get where you want to be with this class if it's your favorite why put it in the game at that point because like yeah i'm sure there's people out there that would, would much rather just like, I'm just going to play it to the end of the game and I'm fine. There's plenty of people like that. I, I think Neil's one of those people. Yeah. Uh, like, no offense to Neil whatsoever. Yeah. That's, a, that's a completely valid way to play the game. I think, though, to make a class or any of your classes be something where it's like, yeah, but you can never go deep with that class. Why did you take the fucking hours to put it in the game then? Because that's fine. I'm not saying anything against casual players. That they should have the full range of the characters just like the hard players, but you shouldn't cut anything off for either player, period. You know? Yeah, and with casual players either, but let's face it, Neil's the kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong, Neil, but you're going to want to like beat the game. And then once you beat the game, is your, is your real motive to get to Chaos 35 even? Like, Probably do you not. even care to? Honestly, I mean, it may be one of those things to where, like, we explore the end game a little bit. But, I mean, at that point, like, Kayla and I are both playing it completely co-op the whole thing. So, like, we'll probably end up finishing it, toy around a little bit here and there, just like we did with Borderlands 3. But eventually, you know, we'll be done with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. And that's yeah. cool. Like, you might 
you might get to chaos five. I mean, if you're, if you're, what I'm saying, I guess, is if you're dedicated enough to want to be to chaos 35, you want to be able to that highest end content, I would imagine, because you've just put 30 hours into mm -hmm. grinding your way up there, you know? Well, and, and when, remember, you... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, and if I remember correctly too, this is something that you guys talked about with, uh, Outriders too, mm -hmm. that there were certain classes yep. that were completely useless once you got to the end game. It's why I haven't finished it, Outriders. It's it's one hundred percent the same thing. Because I found out <laughs> I found out right before I got towards the end game that the thing that I had put so much work into, my class that I had put so much work into, was not a valid way to play in the end. I I don't want to get there then. That's the other yeah. thing too. Like I'm playing Clawbringer. I've loved the class. I've put work into a build that works in the normal game that I am enjoying. Um and I'm in the in the last level. I would be excited to go further with Clawbringer, but to then suddenly find out that the thing you've put work into, yeah, you would need to start the whole game over with a different class. Like even if you know, that's just so deflating to find that out that I would have to go back. Like, and I'm playing Clawbringer with a Spore Warden. That's insane. I'm not going to get anywhere. From from any professional looking at it, there's, there's no way I'm going to get anywhere past, like, Chaos 10, you know? Like... Yeah, because those that those two classes don't double dip with each other and no. double dip with each other. And and my build is good. I like I like my build for main game. It does what it needs to do. It's just once I get to that point where it's all about a math equation, I'm not gonna be able to compete, you know? Yep. And I think I think that speaks to a, a bigger problem with not even just Gearbox, but end games in general. I hate when a game becomes about a math equation because my, my least favorite subject in school was math. I don't love math. And, and I'm not saying that, like, I like playing with numbers in these games. I do. But I don't like my, my victory to be preordained when I walk into uh, some sort of situation in the game. You know, I want to be able to skill my way out of it. I want to be able to have that influence in a way. I'm not saying that there should be like nothing that I, I like, I should be able to skill my way out of everything. That's not what I'm saying. But like Borderlands gets to this point where it's like, it's like your math versus their math. And then if your math is anywhere shy, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. You're walking into a, it's just like you said, Phil, I'm walking into a room, I'm shooting one bullet, reloading, shooting one bullet, reloading, shooting one bullet, reloading, and then the fight's over. And, and that's the problem for me. Like, that's not fun. That's not fun. No. Nope. And, and, or, or, you know, a spell shot, you're sling a spell, sling a spell, shoot, reload to, to use the skill to re, uh, glass to, cannon to quick, to yep. make your cooldown go back up mm -hmm. and sh shoot yeah. a spell like it, it's it's just this it it so you know you have a loop in the game when your combat becomes a fucking loop mm -hmm. it, it your combat's a loop to beat the loop yeah <laughs> you know, like, yeah you know yeah sorry go ahead neil we've been i, I we keep interrupting neil <laughs> go ahead neil yeah, no it's okay so, I mean, you guys, from what you've touched on, too, I mean, it's it's kind of what we're experiencing right now. Um, so, oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm playing uh, Graveborn and Spellshot, primarily the Spellshot. But like you said, the Graveborn, uh, it, like one of my main skills that I've just, I, I don't care about anything in Graveborn, but like two things. One of them being, as soon as you cast, you start to heal. Mm -hmm. And... I have glass cannon on spell shot. So everything else that I have, like my armor, uh, the, the talisman, all that stuff, it is all centered around reload speed. So I can literally walk, stand still and just blast away. Don't get me wrong. I've been doing this for a while now with the build and I've, I've still been having fun with it. But at the same time, like I am playing with Kayla and she's enjoying the game, but she's playing uh, the uh, Berserker and Clawbringer at this uh, for her cross classing, and like for her, yeah, for her, fucked in game. That's that's the thing. That's mm -hmm. the thing is like 
she goes in and she can wreck shit pretty well, but that's the main campaign. Oh yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And like, and as from what you guys have said, you know, that's the thing is like, mm -hmm. sure, we can try to do the end game. We can play around with it a little bit here, but I would go into the end game and be totally fine. Whereas she may have a time with it. Oh, she would definitely have a time with it. And although you have uh, the best one of the best class combos, I could even tell you, you would have to change your play style for end game believe it or not, because um, if I had to take a guess the way you said you're playing, are you playing with uh, Jacob's guns, black powder guns? Yeah, 100%. You're wrong. I, I, and that's not me being an asshole. I'm just yeah, telling you, like, like you have to play the, your play, that play style that you're doing. You mm. need um, you need a lot of dots going on for, for your build to work. Well, as you know, black powder guns, they're non elemental, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So actually, even y although you have the right class setup, yeah, you have, you don't have the right build. For, um, you'd probably get to like your chaos 20. Yeah. But you, you, even with what, even though you have the right class setup, your build is wrong for any farther than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, the only real DOT that I have going on uh, is, like, with my spells. But Lord knows, like, I've been dumping all of my points, basically, into uh, my cooldowns for my spells. Almost yeah. so to the point now that I can cast, and the, time, the second I finish, my timer's almost back up again. So, like, stuff like that, like, it, it's, it's built in that sort of way. But, like you said... You know, that's only going to get so far because at the same time, the type of build I have also is restricting my ability to do something. So yeah. like assault rifles, SMGs, stuff like that, that have a bigger clip size. Sure, I can go ahead and use them all day, every day, and, you know, gun damage, you know, get my gun damage up. That's fine. But when my basically my entire health and safety of my ward is predicated on reloading because it will not recharge otherwise. Yep. That's kind of, you know, that kind of puts a limit on what type of weapons I can use as well. And sure <laughs> enough, anytime I've try and tried to change it up, those are usually the times that I pop and drop. Get this. So this is how, how them raising the 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 difficulty has ruined it so much so what you would have to do in endgame you would take one of those jacob's guns and the you know the ones the pistols that have one shot and then they reload yeah so this is how you have to play how you have to play is you need to before you go into a fight you need to do that 12 times so you build your stacks of spell yeah. weaving Mm -hmm. And you need to switch to a Queen's Cry. Specifically, the Queen's Cry is a pistol that does it. It shoots. <clears throat> it drops meteors from the sky. Well, those meteors are spell damage. You boosted oh, your spell damage so much. <laughs> so what you have to do in your build is unload against a wall to get your spell stacks <laughs> up with a Jacob's gun. Then you switch to this Queen's Cry. Now you're good. Now you can go into the fight and start wrecking shop. That's insane but, that you would have to do something so stupid. Exactly. That's the bad part is that I'm telling... That's what's so sad is that I'm sitting here telling you this is what you have to do. Yeah. And it, there's even some manner of And that. step one is shoot a wall for two minutes. Like, <laughs> Well, that's the thing. There's some manner of that too. I mean, the ward that I... I think it's the ward that I have currently... I can slide and recharge the ward as well. Yeah. But um, that's that's the thing is I don't recharge my ward unless I reload. So there are times where we literally have to stop after an encounter and I'm like, okay, hold on a second. I will pull out the single shot crossbow and just repeatedly fire aimlessly until I fill back up. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I think I, I – yeah. I mean – I want to bring back too to the combat loop being stale. Like that's something that I really felt too in the game towards the end. It would be like I would walk into a room and I'm holding down a trigger 
in pointing the gun at characters and watching numbers appear until they either kill me or they die. You know, and it was something, you know, like I said, with Phil was pointing out the shoot, reload, shoot, reload, shoot, reload, and then that's it. It melts. You know, it's nice. Like, loops aren't necessarily inherently bad. I've played through Sifu possibly triple digit times, you know, and it's the same levels over and over and over again. Same guys over and over and over again, but there's something unique and interesting about each encounter with it. Rogue Legacy 2 is another game that I'm playing right now, which I know that's procedurally generated, but it's still, it's the same like four levels. They're procedurally generated with their enemies and all, but they still make each encounter feel different and new. It's something that's been bothering me about Borderlands. And and again, I think Wonderlands had some of the best quality of life stuff right off the bat, like Phil said, like at launch. Like, I think personally they could have gone a little bit farther with it as I'm talking about now. But compared to the other Borderlands, I think right off at launch, this was one of the best, if not the best launch that Gearbox has ever done with them. That being said, I'm still in this point where, like, the loop itself is is boring me and that, that might be my personal pr preference changing as a person as I get older but that's something that bothers me is that there's nothing like it's just clicking triggers until you either die or you win you know what I mean I guess that's every game but you guys kind of see what I'm saying right yeah I do yeah and, and uh, again the the other problem with the the loop like I said is you know how I said that chaos chambers get a little stale well that the DLCs they're adding, they're just, it, it's a poor excuse for just another chaos chamber with yeah. worse loot options. So there's really no incentive to even go back in because what ends up happening is after you beat the DLCs, then those weapons that can drop in the DLCs can now drop in the chaos chamber. So, so why would you even do the DLC? <laughs> purpose. And they are doing these false things to add content to the game where they'll let the boss in the DLC level up once a week. Mm -hmm. And so they get to level four. So all they've done is they've made it so you have to go into that DLC four times once every week for a month. And then and, and then everything's available in the chaos chambers. Like if they would have if they would have had the chaos chambers and their DLCs, if they didn't want it to be story, they should have at least, and you're going to hear me say something to defend Borderlands 3, which I didn't think I'd ever say, is <clears throat> if their DLCs were takedowns, <clears throat> that would have been awesome. Because uh, the takedown... like I like the takedown. I actually I like, like the takedown. I like the Malawan take. The Malawan takedown, I think, was some of the best... Um, uh, end game mm -hmm. stuff to do i think they should have added some more save points in it for more casual players because that was the thing that i think frustrated a lot of casual people with the takedowns was that you know once once you died you were back to the beginning you know yeah. like what they they had a checkpoint halfway through but yeah that was it. yeah so it was a like a 45 out. minute takedown and you didn't even reach your first checkpoint mm. until 25 minutes into it. Yeah, it, it was it was very hardcore in that. I also felt, uh, while I find myself somewhere in between casual and hardcore on Borderlands usually, uh, especially in 3, I felt like one of my biggest problems with that was what I have been saying about this one now that I was saying was the best part about it when it first launched, which was, you know, I got there with a character that I had put so much work into to only realize that everything I had played and worked up to was useless in the takedown to the point where I had to go back to a ship. I had to respect my character. I had to talk to you about what I needed to put in. That's not fun. I just, like, like that's not fun for me. Like, I didn't get to be creative. I didn't get to put my special juice on it. I just... I did a Zane with all the kill skills. Like, that's what I did, because that's what you did with Zane if you wanted to win. And this game had avoided that in the beginning. This game, the most fun I've had with this, and I said this to Will, I said this to Neil, I've said this to you, Phil, the most fun I had this with this game was the character creator system 
and the making the different classes and seeing what you could do with them in the beginning. I thought that was so cool, the way they broke it down to one tree, and then you got a second tree, and you could mix and match to the trees. I was like, this is fucking awesome. This is what I want from a Borderlands game. Now I can play, and I can feel like I could do whatever I want with this character. And then I get towards the end, and all I find out is that, oh, nope. Somehow, Gearbox has managed to take all of that goodness that they started with, with this character creator and this class system, and just railroad it back into fucking, you're playing three things or you're not winning, you know? And that's yep. just so frustrating for me. It's so frustrating because you have this game that has such a potential for creativity and interesting things, like, and then you break it down to just like, you better get a build off the internet or you're not winning. And that's not that's not fun. And don't get me wrong, our build videos have been very good for us. <laughs> I like putting out build videos, but I would like a game that any build would work. You know, not any build, but you know what I mean. Like anybody who puts some thought into it. Like I want an or at open. Least you could be unique. Yeah, yeah. Like like give us a wide canvas instead of getting to a point where you realize I need to go find Killer Six or fucking. Uh, the other guy that I can't remember the name of. Joel Stude, yeah. Moxie or, or, Moxie or one of them and copy their build down to the letter. Like, I hate that. I hate that. It takes all the creativity out of a game that totes its creativity above all else. Their advertisements for Wonderlands was like, this is the most the most open Wonderlands because we've got a character creator, we've got everything, and then you just find out again that none of that shit matters. Yeah, and, and I'm going to call it now. What they're going to do is eventually, and I, I I checked out, I'll be honest, but I bet if I come back in three months, uh, Spell Shot's garbage, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Clawbringer is the, 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 new, the new meta. Yeah, overcorrection. It's what they, it's what yeah, they did with always. Zane. If you yep. go back to Borderlands 3 right now, Zane is the best character in the game. Zane was dog shit mm -hmm. at launch. He is now the best character in the game. Flack is the garbage character who was my main, who was good in the beginning. He's he's the worst. Like, that's what they do. They overcorrect, and they don't know how to balance their games. And sadly, it's taken... I don't know if it's it's me changing as a gamer or some combination of me changing as a gamer, but I don't know. I may be done with the franchise at this mm -hmm. point, e even though like Borderlands was my thing. Cause yeah. I like, I like the math. I, I don't like that the math has to be. But right. I liked being able to find that math to do the cool shit that would melt stuff faster than it should have been. Mm -hmm. But but when that becomes what you have to do, it takes the fun out of the game. And and this is not even a competitive game. That's the thing no, that bothers me about PvE it. Game. It's a PvE game, so why are we nerfing anything? Unless it's something that's like totally like broken. Why are we nerfing anything? Just make everybody stronger instead of like... Yep. This constant, like, oh, they're playing them too much. Nerf them. Why would you nerf them? Just fucking play. They, just, do, it's, they mm. do it with the guns. They do yeah. it with the characters. They yeah. do it with everything. Instead of, like, when they nerfed that liquid cooling, all because everyone was using it, they just needed to buff the other stuff yep. around it. Yeah. To yeah. give people more option. Yeah. It's the same with the uh, with the Stabomancer and that... that that thing you found, you oh, know, yeah, that, all they should that. do is buff that up, but you know, they're not going to buff that up. What they're going to do is they're going to fuck somebody else up for no reason. You know what I mean? And it's like, why just buff up the things that are too weak? You know, don't, yeah, I don't know. We, yeah, we I actually found that out and you know, Zach already knows cause I told yeah. him, but the stab of Mancer's perk was a plus 30% crit chance. That's his whole perk. The whole thing. I end up like I'm doing math because I'm making builds, you know, and mm. I'm shooting at the dummies and I'm like, this isn't 30 percent, you know, and I come to find out it's 30 percent of your crit hit chance. Well, everybody starts with a 5 percent crit hit chance, so it's 30 percent of 5 percent. 
<laughs> so it's seven. Yeah. Oh, jeez. So that whole character, that whole perk of the Stabomancer is basically negligible because yeah. you're 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 taking a whole perk for another two three percent even if you could get your hit chance up to 40 percent let's say if you used all the gear and stuff so you're mm -hmm. gonna get a bonus 30 percent of 40 percent so what's that another 30 percent of 40 percent you're looking at 13 oh okay 13 percent so maybe you could get yourself to a 50 percent hit chance all right, well, we, we unfortunately have to move on. Do we have any final thoughts on this, or are we already? I, I actually had one little tiny, teeny Go for tiny it. other thing Go uh, for it. that I've kind of talked to you about. Uh, I have been experiencing this entire game split screen. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So we didn't I talk have... about that. Is it still rough? It's... So it's not as rough as it was. Uh, they, thank God, have updated it to where you actually see the stats of the guns. When they put it out before, yeah, it was literally the number of like the the like power level or whatever they're calling it of the item, a symbol for whatever it may be, including all of the different perks and stuff that are associated with that weapon. It's just a symbol and an up or a down. <laughs> That's it. You had to manually pick it up, go into your inventory and inspect each individual thing before you could decide if you wanted it. That was a goddamn nightmare. Yeah. Um, in, a, in a game all about sifting through guns, that would be... Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we also were having issues anytime you would go to add any sort of, like, skill points, anything like that. Uh, it wouldn't load up it, what it was. It just said what, it, like, the skill <laughs> and what you currently had in it. That was it. Not what it changed, not what it affected. <laughs> Uh, there's still a glitch to where if you do inspect gear, sometimes it'll just load up the image. So you have to go over to like the about it and then back over to the actual stats of it for it to actually yeah. load up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely gotten better. Like, you know, you can walk over stuff and it's like tried and true borderlands, you know, it'll all pop up so you can sift through the stuff as it's on the ground. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, we've kind of been grumping a lot of this game. I'm still thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, and I can't wait to, you know, get back to playing it, but that's not wrong with that. what we've, what we've oh, not the all, deal. what we've alluded to basically is there's kind of a point to where there's like a fork in the road with your character. It's mm -hmm. either you start over if you want to actually do the end game stuff or, you know, you were lucky enough to have something that's viable. But like in my case, like I said, uh, the, the playing with somebody else whose build may not work well at higher levels, you know, that's it all depends. And that's that that sucks because that is kind of alienating whoever it is. You know, Kayla, like, I don't know if she necessarily was going to be interested in doing that endgame stuff anyways. But, you know, it kind of locks that door to some degree to yeah. yeah, just because she started the game with a class that nobody knew was going to be viable in her end game. Yep. Well, and even you, cause you're going to have a lot no, of yeah. Yeah. on the way that you have to decide if it's worth it to you. That well, and that'd be pissing me off too. If you had a build that would work for the end game and then they just decided to make the end game harder and more of it, yeah. you know? Yep. They're all talking right. about going all the way to, a hundred. That's fucking stupid. I'm done. Levels. They I'm should sure stop raising levels, period. They but should in closing thoughts, all these games need to play their freaking game and yeah. figure this stuff yeah. out. Because oh, that was another thing I, I real quick mentioned when they made this new DLC, a bunch of people lost their entire story progress. No. Oh, I heard about bug. that. I heard oh. about that. So just back again to play your freaking game yeah. before and, and and know your game. Don't just rely on the community who loves your game to find everything trash about it. You know, and that's something about the indie developers. You can always tell they play their game. You can always tell they love their game, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's just a shame, and, and I'm getting so, like, beat down in the whole industry because it yeah. seems like everything I get excited for it just 
this kind of thing is like repeated in in, mm-hmm. in the way I feel about these games, and it yeah, it, it's it's aggravating as hell. It's really aggravating. It's crestfallen, and it really like just demoralizes you with everything. And I I I completely feel your pain because like I have a hard time getting excited about anything, anything at all anymore because you see it and you're like that's gonna be broken. I don't know how, but it will be. And it's really it it it's really a bummer. It's really a bummer. But we have well, to move on. Of demoralization. Let's move to odds and ends. <laughs> Fuck you, Neil. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with odds and ends, everybody. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right. So that brings us to our final segment, odds and ends. That's where we collect smaller news stories uh, that don't deserve necessarily a talking point, but we want to tell you guys about them. We want to riff on them. We want to just say something about them. So I have four. Neil has seven. I suppose Neil should start us off. Uh, <laughs> so uh, right out of the gate, uh, stupid shit, I guess. Uh, there are actually rumors suggesting that NVIDIA is going to be launching its 40 series graphics cards. Come on. Quarter three, which Come could be as on. early as this July. Yeah, and they did. Uh, what are they, they launching? Refreshes. They already did like TIs of like the 3090 and shit. You know, we can't. You know, is is not good, but as things have improved I just, over the past year or so, <laughs> they still just they don't have them. Can. I see them like drawing it on a piece of paper and then being like, "This is what we're launching." The most can, can we buy that? It's launches. it's the just an idea of it. Launches. You know, it just it sucks too. I never thought I'd see the day where like it's cheaper to buy a pre-built. It, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it honestly is like you're basically if you. I was when we when we were having our our new baby, uh, I, I got bored. And Jacqueline was taking a nap, so I walked over to Micro Center because the the hospital we had a uh, nice. layout was right down the road. And oh. um, yeah, I, I'm I'm like pricing it out, and I'm like, it's eleven hundred dollars cheaper to buy a pre built right now yeah. than for me to build if I were to build a high end uh, PC myself. I never thought that would happen, but it, yeah, it, it did. It happened. It's and, all just supply. Uh, yeah, and, and like we all know that we're not going to be on any of these when they do end up coming out. Uh, we already know that the MSRP on everything's already jacked as it is. The fact that the 40 series cards are going to be coming out so shortly after the 30 series cards came out, it's a wonder why we even had the 30 series cards. Meanwhile, like I still had to pay like $550 for a 2060 <laughs> so you know yeah that's where we're at that's it's like they're selling the at. idea it's like the cars coming out now they don't eat they like like they're so affected by the chip shortage yeah. that like you'll see an ad for it and it'll be like the new cadillac orders starting in a month like orders so this car isn't an actual yeah. car it's just I'm an advertisement on, of a car on the commercials for vehicles and everything uh like if you choose to build your new vehicle instead, like they're now as like a as like a bonus saying that you get priority mm-hmm. on ordering if you yep. build your own. It's yep. like, are you shitting me at this point? Like, which they on. used to push people away from, but right. now they want you to, so that way you expect that delay. But yeah, yeah, the, and they're actually selling these cars without do it. It's screwing me up because because I work on these cars mm-hmm. and. You'll find out, like, you'll fix this car that got in an accident and the radar's not working, right? So you're like, shit, what the hell did I do wrong? Radar's not working. To find out that they actually sold this car without the computer for the radar. But no one ever forwarded that information to me. So here I am thinking Mm -hmm. I messed something up. No, the car didn't have it. They promised that customer that when that computer comes in, they'll install it. Jesus. But they're actually selling the cars with options that the car has, but the option doesn't work because they don't have the part for it. It's insane. That's, That's insane. Wild. It's yeah. absolutely wild. You yeah, put your sure. body in this rolling <laughs> metal, going full well. It doesn't have all the things. That's right. crazy. Right, right. Right. Yeah, and they're like safety features, you know. It's not like right. 
Uh, <laughs> we owe I owe you for the airbags. <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad, but yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want me to go with one, or you want to go take it with one? Go all right. ahead with one. All right. So this one, this one's all for my buddy Asylum because I know this is his favorite game ever, and I'm sure he's gonna get this game. But Dead by Daylight, the popular survival horror game, uh, asymmetrical survival horror game, is getting a dating sim. That's so right. Bad. Off the hook. Zombies? No, you get to date, date serial murderers. It's so much better than zombies. Yes, there'll be four of them. I think it's like from the actual game. Wraith, Trapper, Huntress, and something else. I've only played this game a couple of times. It's not for me. But, uh, but yeah, it's called Off the Hook because in the game you put the survivors on a hook uh, to watch them bleed out. So that's fun. Uh, but you get to you get to do. There's a dating sim coming out for it, which I think is fucking batshit crazy hysterical. Like that's where we are with franchises now, where it's like, yeah, let's just do a dating sim too. Why not? Uh, somebody will buy it. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 They, they, they did the KFC dating sim. So I mean, oh, I remember that. Can do yeah. it. I mean, anybody can do it. Dude, the game should end. Every game, no matter who you try and date, should end with you getting stabbed to death. If if oh. that was the end, I would think that would I would be like, all right, I like this game. Like just from the premise, like j like no matter like it's like yes, I love you, and then it's just them brutally stabbing you repeatedly, and then that's <laughs> the end. Like no matter how you do it, <laughs> uh, but it was worth it for love. <laughs> <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, moving on, a uh, story that we actually have kind of covered a little bit in okay. other realms, uh, dot, 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 uh, Saudi Arabia now owns a 5% yeah. stake in Nintendo. I warned is... you. Didn't I say this shit? Didn't I say yeah. this shit? Those motherfuckers buying up all sorts of yeah. games. Keep those psychopaths. Out of the video most games. Corrupt government. The most corrupt government in the world. They own five. They also own like five percent of Capcom, don't they? SNK, I think it was. Well, yeah. You know they own every like anything you see tied to BlackRock. That's Saudi Arabia. They own everything. BlackRock. Yeah. So like, if you if you looked at stocks, anything that's publicly oh. traded, that's oh. large. If you ever see BlackRock, that's Saudi Arabia. That's Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Every like Twitter, Facebook, yeah, all those are. The BlackRock will be like a high yeah. stake, you know, holder. at Saudi. They're, 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 they're uh, oil princes. Can't wait for them to own gaming. This is great. I I can't wait for it to slowly seep into our games too like oh i hate i hate that i, I don't even want to talk about that so there, if you have more to say about it but i just think it's funny no, that that's about it. That their corporations sound evil like blackrock <laughs> like it, does. it does <laughs> it does it does uh okay so you got five left now uh one two three four left all right. Oh, I got three. I'm going to go with another one because I feel like it. All right. Sounds great. <laughs> My next one you've probably heard about, and uh, I'm very excited to make my wife play this on Prelude at some point because she's going to hate it. But Fall Guys is finally going free to play. It is also being launched on Xbox and Nintendo Switch, which uh, I, I'm actually kind of excited. I know it's a goofy, stupid Battle Royale game, but it actually looks really fun to me. I've always wanted yeah. to play it, and I've always kind of thought that that game should have been free to play. Like, yeah. Battle Royales, stuff like that, should just be free to play right off the bat. That's the mode, that's the model that they use. So, like, I kind of always wanted it to be free to play. So this kind of makes sense to me. I'm not really upset about it. I, and I finally get to try it. And I guess they've added tons of levels to it since then, since it's launched and stuff like that. So... I'm kind. I'm kind of excited about it, but yeah, free to play, and it's, it's all happening on June 21st. If you are interested, uh, and like I said, it goes live everywhere. Ex uh, Epic Store, which didn't have it before, from what I understand, uh, Xbox, and um, uh, Switch. All get it. 
trying to pump those numbers back up since they've they fallen are. off a bit. And that's true. They are. And they'll they'll get a little they've boost. They'll get a little fallen boost. Fallen off a bit. Why not 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 I'll see myself out. Uh, <laughs> and don't forget to tip your waitress. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Norman Reedus, uh, basically confirmed that oh, God damn on it. Death Stranding 2, uh, he just kind of blurted it out in the middle of interview. Uh, he was asked about like his work on the first game. It wasn't even anything like related to Death Stranding. And he just said, oh yeah, we just started work on the second one. Uh, <laughs> and Kojima was like, ah, yeah, uh, but uh, like didn't confirm one way or another. So basically, there's going to be a Death Stranding 2. Uh, In game number two, two, you get to shit on things. Yeah. Well, Fucking... it's going to be a part of that new PlayStation Plus Whatever. thing. So I want nothing to do with it. Can... Enjoy that Try PlayStation, people. Enjoy that fucking garbage game. I I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. On a whole other side note. Norman Reedus really sounds like in like 10 years, he's going to be at a trial with a supermodel who shit on his bed. Like that's how he, <laughs> he just seems like that kind of guy to me. Uh, I, I'm sorry. He does. He just he's just real weird. Someone else after this. He's that's just true. real weird. He's, be broke as <laughs> he's just real weird. And he looks drunk and stoned out of his mind at all times. And the last dude who seemed like that was Johnny Depp to me. That this, being, this could be a perfect solution though, because she ain't going <laughs> to bed to shit on after this. So bed to so shit. She's gonna have to find somebody else. I <laughs> think that those two kind of look the same too. Now that we think about it, <laughs> they do. They weirdly do. You see what I'm saying? I wait, look. wait. Is he's not the dude who play? Who's the actor? Is he Norman Reedus? Yeah, that's not who you're talking about, is it? Norman Reedus is the actor from The Walking Dead who was oh, in. Uh, we're talking about him. Yeah, he the just looks like Johnny. Yeah. yeah, the crossbow. Yeah, guy. he looks like Johnny Depp to me, like or not Johnny Depp, but just that kind of. Look, aside from that, look, I I've washed my hands of Kojima a long time ago. This has nothing to do with PlayStation. Kojima is a fucking psychopath who is so wrapped up in his own ego and his own image that he has no connection to the real world or what games are anymore. And the people who buy his games are just contributing to his insane fucking ego. Death Stranding was not a good game. I don't care what anybody says. I don't, I'll debate him. I'll debate him all day long. It was about... It was about a mailman who drank too many monster drinks with a baby in his chest. Like, it's just fucking garbage, all right? It's just a bunch of crazy ideas jammed together. It, it's a walking simulation, right? Yeah, it's, it, yeah. it literally felt like, it, it felt like something that Gilmero Del Toro and fucking Kojima came up with on an LSD bender. Like, that's what it felt like. And it was like, the, well, we could do this because I'm fucking Kojima. And... I, that guy just bugs me. It just bugs me. He's always bugged me. I've had many terrible things to say about Kojima. I don't want to go down that road. I, we don't have enough time for me to go down that road. Kojima's a piece of shit. I don't want Death Stranding 2, but that's fine. If he's working on that, you go for it. You go for it. Fucking garbage. Uh, do you All want right. to do another one? Since I'm, I'm, I only have two left. Uh, no, go ahead and do one. All right. Um... This one I'm also excited for. Well, should I go? Oh, no. I'm excited about both of mine. I was pretty positive this week. I'm excited about this. All right. So there was kind of an indie game that came out. I want to say three, maybe four years ago, maybe less. Uh, it's called Greedfall. I was all about Greedfall. I have a review up on the channel for it. I loved Greedfall. Greedfall was like a Victorian era Mass Effect in kind of a fantasy world. I loved Greedfall. The only thing I didn't like about it was the ending was terrible. Like, absolutely terrible. And the uh, they didn't make any DLC or have any tail end for it whatsoever. Uh, which, was, which was just a bummer because it was such a good game. I wanted to see more of it. 
Um, especially after the crap ending. Like the, the ending was crap. You had all these great decisions and it boiled down to a 50-50 and I didn't like that. But everything leading up to it was just great. It was old school Mass Effect, old school Dragon's Age. Like it was just great stuff. The story was great. Like the way the gameplay worked, the combat was good. I just loved that game. I Neil, you remember. I liked that game a lot. I, I think I Phil, it, I yeah. think Phil would remember too. I talked about it a bit. I played all the way through it. They're making a second one. They announced a second one. It's coming out next year. Uh, and yeah, they're making a second one. And it's going to be a prequel. And it's really cool because the whole plot of it was that, uh, like I said, fantasy world. But like, kind of like British white nation sort of situation is like plagued. They go to like kind of like a fictional America's and end up with, like, a native people who do magic and then kind of start killing them. You know what I mean? Like, kind of the colonial thing, but with a fantasy touch to it. Well, in this one, it's going to be a prequel where you play one of the... And in that one, you play one of the, like, the British colonists coming over and having to figure out how to navigate this, like, world. In the prequel, you're going to play one of the natives who's taken over to the other side, to the British side of things, and have to do that. And... I, it just looks so interesting to me. I'm really excited about it. I thought Spiders knocked it out of the park with the first one, so I'm very excited about the second one. Please do better with the ending. But other than that, it was a great game. So that's what I'm excited for. I'm done talking about it now. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. I remember being curious about that mm -hmm. game. One, it's weird because um, they're about to release Steel Rising, so nobody thought they were big enough to have two games in the work. In the works. I don't know what that other one is. You do. We've talked about it. It was at an yeah. E3. It's been kind of quiet since then, but it slowly had some trailers. It's really weird. It's like there's a robot, uh, oh, a robot like a woman that you play, ballerina. but she's like a ballerina, and it's yeah, like in okay, a Victorian yeah, age, and you kill is, yeah. other weird Victorian robots. It yeah. That game does not interest me, but like <laughs> the fact that they're making a Green Fall 2 does. All right. Uh, so, uh, according to Kotaku, there are reports from within EA that they are pursuing either a merger or a full-on acquisition ever since the Microsoft Activision deal was announced. Uh, so, that would be interesting uh, to just continue this whole buying spree that everybody's been going on lately. It's going to be Microsoft. Uh, it's going to be Microsoft. It's going to be Microsoft. You want you want my tinfoil hat on or off? That's that fine. It's going to be Microsoft. Shit as long as the government doesn't stop them and the government's not going to stop them because the government doesn't stop anything. It, it's going to be fucking Microsoft. They're going to buy them. That's that like Microsoft has all the money in the fucking world and they're trying to buy up all the companies. They they got slowed a little bit because the Blizzard thing was bullshit and they've had to like work through the red tape of all the legal bullshit. But it doesn't matter. They they've got Bethesda. They've got they're gonna go for the trifecta. They're gonna buy EA. That'll be it, man. I it, like it's either EA or Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Yeah, it's either they're EA or Ubisoft. I'm telling you, one of those companies is is because both of them have announced they're for sale. I can't believe like I can't believe they announced it for their sale and within two hours didn't have Phil Spencer's cock in their mouth. Like I cannot believe that didn't happen immediately. So That's like, why you haven't heard about it. It's a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's almost it's Microsoft is like collecting companies now, like fucking Infinity Stones. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. seriously, like uh, all of the, the Activision Blizzard, the Bethesda one, you know, uh, I, like you'd said, it could be EA because if I remember correctly, uh, Microsoft did have some sort of, or EA had some sort of exclusive exclusivity deal with Microsoft at yes. one point. Yeah, uh, so, on a couple I of mean, things. Yeah, there. That's a very real possibility. There, they I they mean, have a deal with them on Game Pass. Their EA Play, all of their EA Play games can be played true, through yeah, Games Pass. True. They already yeah. have the fucking road leading to. Yeah being owned it, it's true. they need to fix that ea thing on games pass oh it sucks it's a pain in the ass it's a man. pain in the ass it's very you know hard to play those games I've been trying to play uh the uh mass effect thing oh uh, yeah it's awful it's it, it's very hard i've had problems with it takes two quite a few times and that's the only one i've really played through there but yeah it, it, it's messed up 
nonetheless, they, they still it's right fucking there. It's right there. The proof is in the pudding. They're pro. They they're already in a room with them. Okay, already in a room with them. Uh, so you have one more, correct? Yeah, just one. All righty. Oh, you want me to go? I was gonna say. I mean, okay. if you wanna, if you wanna. I I am telling you, we don't have any overlap. I'm pretty sure. My last one is uh, Embracer, uh, and this one is specifically for Terry Shakespeare, who I don't know if he's gonna listen to this. I don't know if he listens to every podcast, but a couple podcasts ago. Maybe the last one, I'm not sure. He commented when we talked about the whole Embracer buying Square Enix Western Studios thing, and he had basically said he's really excited to see a lot of those franchises come back, and I had said to temper his expectations because I'm not sure any of those franchises are coming back uh, now that they're owned by Embracer. But Embracer has gone ahead and uh, I think in an earnings call basically said they're all about using those studios to make sequels for games that people want, for remasters and remakes of old games, they want to bring back. Uh, they want to bring back. Well, they already. Ha they're going to continue with the Tomb Raider game, which I was suspicious that they weren't going to do. They are going to continue with the unannounced, unreleased Tomb Raider game. Um, but they are also talking about making some interesting sequels and remakes, and the both Deus Ex and Legacy of Cain was thrown out there. <laughs> Which, oh. there has not been a Legacy of Cain game since 2003. I was and about I, to say, yeah. I would love a remaster collection of those games in the, in, the, in the present day. I'd love a remaster collection of those games. If that's all, we, even if that's all we get. Like, so, I, I don't know. But still, they have said that, that these franchises are very valuable. Uh, and and they, they actually said that they didn't think Square Enix had valued them appropriately. So, so Deus Ex which has been something that fans have wanted to come back for a while. And uh, uh, um, and Legacy of Kane, which I, I think every gamer who's older than, you know, 20 knows what that is and would kind of like to see that resolved. I don't even think that game ever had a res resolution. It ended in, like, a I cliffhanger, so. if I recall correctly. I'm really glad to hear that because uh, <clears throat> fuck Square Enix. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you had been here for the Square Enix conversation we had a couple of weeks ago, Phil Billy. Oh, you could have just said fuck. Fuck I, Square Enix the whole time. I was saying it in spirit, trust me. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, since it's kind of been brought up, we, can, uh, we keep talking about Square Enix. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> well, this, this one, uh, it's bizarre because, again, I cannot stop watching this fucking dumpster fire. Oh, here um, we go. Babylon's it's the Babylon's Fall, Fall report. <laughs> Babylon's Fall. Of Fall. Of <laughs> Never stop it's, covering this game, Neil. Never stop. We're going to dedicate a whole segment. It's not even going to be an odds and ends. It's going to be Neil's Babylon's Fall report. This. <laughs> they just put a bunch of NPCs so that one guy can play by himself. Oh, that, that'd be fun and sad at the same time. <laughs> uh, well, they're apparently still moving forward with season two, even though they can't get like apparently double digit players on a regular base. Oh, uh, but they are going to be starting May 31st. Good for them. Good for them. Uh, I guess. At the same time, Good for you, Bobby. Good for you, Bobby. <laughs> There is one guy out there who's like, uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> if, but at the same time, like if if there's not anything here to bring people back, I think we should maybe like I don't know. Look, station about not moving forward anymore. <laughs> my position stays the same on this. I do not like it when game companies immediately abandon projects because they've made promises to the people who bought those projects. They need to at least try to honor them slightly. Do I think they should continue to do this as long as Godfall has supported their shit? No. I think that they should fucking release one DLC, see if they can't bring people back, and then walk away. That being said, I think it's real fucking interesting that Square Enix decides to sell Crystal Dynamics... Fucking, and two other companies, I can't remember their names, but you know what I mean, the studios, and keep Babylon's Fall going. Like, we're, no, we're definitely going with Babylon's Fall. We can't make any money off Tomb Raider, but we're going to make money off Babylon's Fall. Fucking idiots. 
they realize that there's gonna come a time where everyone realizes that Elden Ring isn't good, and they're gonna <laughs> be like, you know what? I need to go back to the truly superior game, and they're all gonna flock back. They're gonna fall back to Babylon's Fall. They, they hot take. It. Hot take. They it it it's. It, it's it's got to be fact at this point. I mean, there's no way that Square Enix could be wrong. Yeah, Square Enix, they they know what they're doing. They've yeah. had nothing but success and great <laughs> great support of every game that they yeah. launch. Yeah, their NFTs are going to be great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's really funny you bring up NFTs. That uh, is just God. I'm damn, a segue master today. Perfect. Dude, did you hear about NFTs? Did you hear about the dude who bought like the first tweet? Um, yes. For, like, yes, I heard this story. Like, Three billion dollars, and someone offered him like two hundred and sixteen bucks for it or something. Yeah, shit. and he's gonna like, hold on to it. Okay. The first guy who made Twitter. <laughs> uh, oh. NFTs. Your, I'm guessing this is your last one. Yeah, this is my last one. Uh, so uh, in a corporation who's always late to absolutely the fuck all everything, GameStop is entering the <laughs> NFT market. Uh, they are partnering with a company called Immutable. I have no idea what this company is. I guess their is. hand sanitizer business didn't work out for well. uh, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is actually a coming soon website. Uh, for signups as well to become an NFT creator on the site for the uh, NFTs that GameStop is going to be selling. GameStop is literally Why? like the cokehead, <laughs> just going from place to place. Like, this will make me money, right? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't have anything to say about that. It's, it's like just the, they're dumb. It's like the so Internet dumb. Explorer meme, where it's like all the different icons for all the explorers out there and they all like load up whatever they're gonna say and then it's like that little internet explorer microsoft e says the very first thing that they all said at the end like <laughs> super late to everything <laughs> the market has basically completely collapsed at this point for mm -hmm. you know the, the pyramid scheme that those things basically are yeah uh, but uh yeah i don't know what would possess GameStop to even like jump into that. I mean, who knows? Maybe <laughs> in a year or so, they're going to start selling jeans and t shirts. <laughs> they already sell t shirts. They sell t shirts, uh, man. Uh, they sell mind. stuffed I, I animals, too. My, I rescind my shitty joke. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's bizarre. Absolutely. They sell $2 bizarre. stuffed animals for $27. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, so that's last odds and ends. You want to? Yes, if anybody's got anything to add, that's fine. Otherwise, let's go to plugs and get the fuck out of here. Horrible gaming podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, bring, that brings us to the end of the show and the shameless self promotion that comes with it. Uh, yeah, Neil. Uh, well, no, let's give it to the special guest first. Uh, Phil Billy, anything you want to special you want to plug? You know, not, not in particular. Um, Zach and I are gonna try to do some mm. Wildermyth streaming since I'm a, a lost and wandering through the gaming space <laughs> as it is now, but uh, but um, with the new kid and stuff, my playtime obviously is dwindled so uh for the little bit of foreseeable future i got nothing in the books concrete you guys are flanked you're flanked on all sides with kids now um uh yeah we're definitely going to do some wilderness streaming i have a relatively large adult life week this week so i do not have as much time to either so but we're going to get together in the next couple of weeks and start doing some wilderness streaming because i loved playing wilderness with you and I, yeah. I want a reason to continue to play Wildermyth, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it's I'm in that CRPG mood lately, mm -hmm. so and that's, that's right in there. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. Uh, Neil, anything you want to plug, man? 
Uh, well, nothing concrete. I am out of school now, so I very well might be able to do more than just my single one solitary stream that I did. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there's that. I'm not going to waste my it though because uh i have talked about it for the past like three weeks just like i have done with many other things namely my terrible talk that i said that i was going to do about a year and a half ago so <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah uh, i like the self-awareness <laughs> you what i like the self-awareness there <laughs> yeah i uh, it's fine if you're honest with yourself you'll be honest with <laughs> uh so yeah you know maybe i will maybe i won't who knows uh, but yeah, outside of that, we are trying to figure out some time frame to reschedule yes. our, uh, Halo fire fight. Uh, normally it would have been this week, but as Zach said, his week is kind of booked, uh, and you know, we're, we're sifting through different things. So well, we may have a better idea next week as to when we're going to try to peg it for May is going to be a fucking nightmare from now on. Like it just, it just is. Uh, everybody's birthday everybody's it's another one of those months to this everybody's celebrating a birthday uh that myself and phil billy are related to <laughs> so like like it's just it's just a fucking nightmare and this week especially um is so like it's, there's birthdays and my kid's birthday is wednesday which is why we can't do it and then of course i've got star trek axiom every other wednesday so the wednesday yep. after that i'm gonna be busy with that uh but the week after that we can probably play um i don't want to set anything concrete yet because it's two weeks out but i'm gonna say tentatively uh as far as stuff that's concrete right now that i can plug uh number one there's not going to be a Skyrim lunch stream this week for the obvious reason that my kid's birthday. I'm actually going to be chaperone on a field trip, which I'm incredibly nervous about because I have to be responsible for not just my psychopathic little <laughs> kid, but a bunch of other ones. Uh, nonetheless, I will not be around to play Skyrim for everybody. Uh, that being said, I apologize, uh, but I will be back the week after this week. Uh, my normal stream of Amateur Hour will be going, and I've actually been enjoying uh, Grounded with Friends with uh, Jason. We're actually going to try and play that Tuesday morning if you want to check that out. Other than that, I've been plugging it. I'm going to continue to plug it. Please check out Axiom Games on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we are closing in on our first game release. Phil, right here, right here, did the cover art for it. You can see that on the website. Um, and it's beautiful. It's wonderful cover art. He's also a play tester in it. As, well, I guess this wasn't on the show, but Neil is also going to be helping me as a play tester in the game. Uh, so, yes. So, this game, we are progressing towards it. I am doing a development diary every Monday that I possibly can. Uh, so, please check those out. They, they usually go around, out around the afternoon. Um, and those are, there's already two, and I'm also posting them here on this channel just to get more eyes on it as much as humanly possible. It is a wrestling role-playing game. Please, 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 please check it out if that's something that interests you. And if it's not something that interests you, I will get you to be interested in it. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, just kidding. Uh, listen, uh, also please check out uh, Axiom. I love Axiom. Uh, I, we're finally hitting our stride with that tabletop role-playing game. Um, as much as some of our players can get cranky with it, I think the actual quality of the show is getting really good. So please check that out. You can check that out here uh, every, fr every Friday after it comes out. So every other Friday. Uh, and there is a playlist with all six episodes up. So with that, we're going to wrap this thing up. Big thanks to the Buildmaster General, our third foundation member. That would be Phil Billy 330 Thank you, sir, for being here and talking Wonderlands with us. Yeah, Absolutely. Thanks for having us. I'm you're finger gunsing at you, but <laughs> what side of the screen you're on. You're totally finger gunning the wrong way because he's above you. Uh, so, so it totally works. Uh, uh, but yes, but thank you, sir. We really appreciate you being here for everybody else. You can contact us on Facebook at OldManGamingDH. You can contact us on Twitter at OldManGaming9. You can join our Discord. The link will be in the description below. You can influence this and all of our shows from there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as long as you keep watching it, we'll keep making them. See you guys next time.
<laughs> I mean, we we did something like that one time going to McDonald's. We were both super fucking hungry, and we just ordered a ludicrous amount of food and felt bad about it. So when we rolled up to the fucking thing to pick up the food, we were like, "Oh, the kids are gonna love this." <laughs> <laughs> We created fake children to hide the shame. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's oh, awesome. God. That's I have you definitely were afraid of the fat shaming, <laughs> and I was worried about nerd shaming. That's awesome. Oh my god. That's awesome. I've never had that problem, but I definitely, when I go to get Wendy's for the family in the morning, and I'm the only one in the car, I need the drive-through person to know to that know. I'm taking that it home to a family. Yeah, like, like, like when I get up there, and they're like, I'm like, no, 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 no. I am a father. My, I'm ordering for the whole family. I'm not one man in pajamas about to go down to my apartment and eat all this. Uh, all right. Let's get into. I wonder if I'll do that shit like, like if my kid wants a McDonald's meal when she's older, and I go and get, but I just am buying a Happy Meal. I wonder if subconsciously, like if I'm not hungry for McDonald's, right. if I'll have to be like, yeah, I'll have a Happy Meal. It's for my kid. It's not for me. <laughs> Which toy just, he wants? Just like, order a small it's for fries. My kid. What would a little girl like? <laughs> Just order a small fry with it. Then they'll be like, oh, he's getting it for his kid. He's getting the small fries for him. Just, just something other than the Happy Meal. All right. Uh, Happy Meal in a large coffee black. <laughs> for a father. No cream or sugar. I'm a man, damn it. When you bring it to me, you punch me in the face, and you mean it. <laughs> All right. Let's get into this. Going in, <laughs> I think I got both the opening and the ending from all that. I'm gonna have to cut it. But going in, 